So once again, I'll, I'll welcome you to this session. We are continuing with uh, whatever we were doing last time on oscillators. And today we are going to start on a crystal oscillator. So crystal oscillator basically uses a crystal. Now this crystal is, uh, provides the resonance circuit and that's why it's drawn connected in series, in, in, as a series feedback to the, the circuit. The R frequency coil provides the decoupling of the DC components so that uh, it doesn't, it's not coupled to the output. So R1, R2, and R3 resistor provides a potential bias. So it uses a, a piezoelectric crystal. It uses a piezoelectric This is a piezoelectric crystal to provide the resonance. To provide the resonance for the output frequency. Resistors R1, R2 and RE are basically providing the bias required for effective operation of the circuit. So another thing I've said is that the crystal is connected as a series feedback. The crystal oscillator is connected as a series feedback. It's connected as a series feedback. to provide the required phase phase in addition to the phase provided by provided by the transistor So the output frequency is given by So we can have the equivalent circuit of a crystal. The crystal equivalent circuit for resonance is as shown below. So normally we have the resistor, capacitor, and then we have the inductor. All these are connected in parallel with the coupling capacitor. So this whatever for to R C L. So this is to maybe C L. So the circuit we have here will provide the resonance, and we know that at resonance, not that, at resonance, at, at resonance, XL is equals to XC. 
note that the acceleration of XL is equal to XC. And if you do that, we shall be able to get this formula. So this is another type of oscillator, and this is a phase shift oscillator, and it's a RC, and RC means that it's using the resistor and capacitors. Eh? And uh, when, we look, when we look at this diagram, it has been sections with the broken lines with the sh phase shift circuits, and the any time there's a combination of uh, a capacitor and a resistor, we get a phase shift circuit. So what happens is that when you connect the supply voltage, we are able to create the oscillation through the phase shift networks. So because the transistor will provide a phase shift of 180 degrees, this other, phase, this 180, uh, this other 180 degrees phase shift that is required will be divided, divided among us the, 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 the number of phase shift resistors we have. And because of that, then the formula for oscillations will be a bit different as we shall be able to see there. So we are, we are saying that when the supply, when the circuit is connected to the supply, when the circuit is connected to the supply. The phase shift network provides the oscillation when the switch is done. The phase shift network provides the oscillation when switching when switching is done. So at start the oscillations are minor and as time and with time and with the time and with time the oscillations grow due to positive feedback. Due to the positive feedback through the phase shift network. Due to the positive feedback through the phase shift network. So the frequency of relation is given by on our two pi RC the root of six. Cannot have the advantages. Advantages of RC network. Oscillators. Number one we have is they do not require expensive circuit. They do not require expensive circuit since bulk inductors, since 
bulky inductors, whatever referred to as sometimes as transformers, are avoided. Number two, positive feedback occurs at only one frequency. Only one cut at only one frequency. Hence, sine wave output hence the sine wave output is possible. <coughs> then we go to the disadvantages of this type of circuit. When you look at advantage, you must look at disadvantages. Number one, not possible to produce variable frequency. Variable frequency since the components in the phase shift network have fixed values. Number two, it produces distortion. It produces. It produces distortion of about five percent. Of about five percent in the output signal. Number three, it's, it necessitates a positive, a feedback transistor. It necessitates it requires then, it requires that the transistor used to the transistor used to provide ma great margin gain used it requires that, that the transistor used be able to say used to be able be able provide, <coughs> be able to provide a greater gain to overcome the greater gain to overcome the losses. So this is another type of oscillator we refer to as the Winnie Bridge oscillator. And uh, the unique thing about this oscillator is that uh, the combination of R1, C1, R2, and C2 determines the oscillation frequency. So for us to have, uh, for us to have whatever I refer to as a, as a constant output, then this is a tungsten and it is very temperature sensitive. 
It helps in providing the positive, and the positive feedback through this so that we are able to regulate the output of the oscillator. Another thing you need to know is that when the circuit is, is, is switched on, eh? when the circuit is switched on, when the circuit is switched on, then uh, the solution frequency can be determined from the combination of this and, uh, and the bridge. The bridge here, it help us attain the balance. So when the, uh, the bridge is balanced, then this, uh, the, the opposite arms shall be giving us equal. So for us to have a current flow, then the temperature of the tungsten will be varied. And, there, and so the input to the transistor will now change for us to have a, a more increased gain or a change in gain that will be coupled to the output. So this is the key circuit. And sometimes it's extracted and it's drawn in this manner. When it's extracted, it's drawn in this manner. So the feedback is normally taken at this point. That one, this, so we talk of, this is the feedback circuit. So this R1, C1, R2, C2. So, <coughs> so when the circuit, is switched on, the oscillation frequency is given by the oscillation frequency given by Another thing is that the negative feedback ensures a constant the negative feedback ensures a constant output and this is achieved by the temperature sensitive resistor or tungsten and this is achieved by the temperature sensitive tungsten resistor, tungsten resistor RP. The resistance of the tungsten increases with the temperature. It increases with the temperature and as a result, and as a result, there is reduction in amplitude. The amplitude of the signal, the reduction in the amplitude of the signal making the output 
constant. Then we shall go, we shall now have the advantages. Number one, it gives a constant output. <coughs> Number two, the circuit works easily. In other words, we're talking about simple operation. Uh, number three is, is that the overall gain is high because of the two transistors. The overall gain is high because of the two transistors. And number four, the frequency of the oscillation can easily be changed. Can easily be changed. The frequency of solution can easily be changed by using a potentiometer. By using a potentiometer. Then we'll go to the disadvantages. Advantages. Number one, it's only suitable for low frequencies. And number two, it requires two transistors. Requires two transistors and a large number and a large number of components. And large number transistors and large number of components. <coughs> 